What is good YouTube, Warst you here with a movie review on Alita Battle Angel, although most people just call this movie Alita. So, before we get into this review stroke, my overall thoughts of what I thought about this fantastic, visually stunning movie, let me know down below. Have you had the chance to go and see it? I believe it came out in America last Friday, so it's been out for a minute, and I did see it, and it is pretty good. So first off, I want to say you can tell that this movie was made with a lot of passion, a lot of hard work has gone into the making this movie very visually stunning. The action sequences are fire, very good from a CGI VFX point of view. Now this movie has come under a lot of fire from the social justice warrior train. But only good movies tend to do that. So this isn't like a 10 out of 10 movie. It is a really decent movie and you should go watch it if you do have the chance. I believe it was something like 2 hours 20. But the movie, it wasn't jarring. I mean, there were a few pacing issues throughout the whole of the movie. But it isn't a movie that felt like it was a really long movie. You know when you go and watch a movie and it feels like it's 5 hours long. This was a really short movie for how long you were actually in the cinema. I believe the last movie I watched where I felt like the movie didn't feel long when it was pretty long was Avengers Infinity War. That was a movie and in Spider-Verse. Those two movies didn't feel like it was long. So this movie wasn't boring. So let's get into exactly what your boy watched you thought. So it is a pretty generic storyline, so to speak be from a storytelling point of view. So this movie has apparently been in the works for 20 years from the same person that made Avatar, James Cameron. So with that kind of, I guess you could say, persona, the kind of the props that James Cameron has, although he isn't exclusively the only person that made this movie, it did have a big kind of void to fill knowing that the person that made Avatar was behind this movie so i didn't get to go to see an early screen and i didn't try to but we should have done it pretty much because it would have been a much better screening so the opening weekend in america didn't do very well so the movie had a budget of 170 million dollars to 200 million dollars predictedly so it only made 28 million like in america which isn't really that much for the opening weekend but I do think it's a massive feat for manga. So obviously manga movies, we're living in the manga generation, so to speak. We had like Dragon Ball Z Super Broly. We had this movie. We've got Detective Pikachu. So anime movies are becoming more popular throughout the 21st century, which is pretty fantastic. So essentially, it's a movie about a deactivated female cyborg who is revived from spare parts, but she cannot remember anything from her past and goes on a conquest, or I guess you could say a quest to find out what had happened to her. So there's a bit of controversy around the way she looks, which is pretty, pretty interesting because it's a live action movie, but she is clearly a cyborg who has a human brain, a brain at least works like a human. So from the images that I found online and from doing a bunch of research, it does look like the actress who played Alita was basically running around with a motion caption kind of device on her head, you know, all the dots. And they literally just used her face in a cyborg CGI VFX graphics based character, which came across pretty cool. There was a bit of controversy online with her eyes, but from what I could see, there was no issues for me with the eyes. A lot of people online have an issue with the eyes. And this is a weird movie, so to speak, because I, I did read a bunch of reviews and read the overall kind of Rotten Tomato score, and the critics, the critics were a bit harsh on it, like they are always harsh on movies. But a better indication of like when you go to watch a movie, or if you're thinking about going to watch a movie, is to actually check out the audience score, because obviously critics have to be critically, they have to analyze things differently to, I guess you could say, the general audience, the way the general audience would evaluate a movie. I mean, technically you could say I'm a critic because I get invited to early screenings, like media screenings, so I get to review things early. So technically I'm a critic, but I don't review things like a normal cricket. So let's take a look at the Rotten Tomatoes score. So yeah, just like I thought, 60% of 
on RT average score. Not very high for how like good it was. It's not like the best movie ever, but you compare the 60% it got on Rotten Tomato to the 94% it got on the actual audience score, which I think the audience score does mean a lot because there's been a lot of movies that have critically flopped, but have done well because people wanted to see it. It's a kind of movie that, like, it's word of mouth. It's like, it's actually a lot better than what I actually thought it would be. So obviously 20th Century Fox, I think, have smashed this movie. They did kind of uh, set up a sequel, I guess you could say. But like I said, the sequels tend to kind of flow on how much money did the movie make? Did it break even? And all them kind of things. So there was a love story in this movie. Yeah, I know. A love story. And it was... I guess you could say it was an organic love story. It wasn't pushed in your face, but at the same time, she obviously gets kind of gets with this character who is a bit dodgy, doing a bit of shady things. We're not trying to talk massive spoilers. So I believe her boyfriend or friend, friends with benefits, I guess you could say, Hugo, you didn't really feel for the relationship at all. Although it was there, it wasn't really that relevant because, okay, let's talk spoilers. At the end, something happens to him, which essentially sets up this sequel if they ever make it. And to be honest, I think most people watching it didn't care at all for Hugo. They probably cared for Alita the way that she was feeling and that she was so annoyed. But essentially, a lot of people are comparing her to a what, like to a hero. And to me, she isn't a hero at all. She's not a hero. Do I like the character Alita? Yeah, sure, the character was awesome, but no, she's not a hero. I've seen some people making references to the fact that she's such a great hero compared to Captain Marvel. I don't want to talk about Captain Marvel. I'm trying to get away from Marvel stuff. Well, at least not make as much Marvel content. But to kind of get my point across, it's like everyone's going, yeah, Alita is such a great hero, when realistically, she loses her memories. She's there to take out some big-ass dude that she doesn't actually end up taking out at the end of the movie, hence the tear for the next movie. And it's literally the same quest throughout the whole movie. She's just picking up back from where she left over. So, yes, she is the death. She is the angel of death, hence the, like, battle angel, like, title. But, yeah, it was a pretty good movie. Uh, I did say on my community tab earlier that I was going to be doing a video about it. Obviously, the writers are James Cameron. So, I felt like for how good the writers are supposed to be, the writing did did let it down. The action sequences were fire. They were fantastic. Obviously, it was directed by Robert Rodriguez. And you can obviously, you can tell that a lot of passion, a lot of care was taken in this movie to make it bang in your face. Know that Alita is a cyborg. It is manga. It is animation, which is pretty cool because a lot of people want this. Yes, this, this, like I said before, earlier in review, this movie will not do well as a whole. It will probably get somewhere between 200 to uh, maybe 400 million at a push. But overall, it was a pretty good storyline. The villains are weak because realistically, yes, she gets hurt and then she gets her ultimate armor, I guess you could say. I think it was the berserk um, suit she gets towards the end. But she had to get hurt to kind of get stronger. And then she came back and destroyed absolutely everyone in her way. She became like the champ. She was essentially the champion of the movie. There's this little game they play called Motorball. And there's this promise that if you are the champion, if you are the MVP, you can get a trip to Zolom. Essentially, Zolom is where everyone is trying to get to. So essentially, she she has a stare down with Nova at the end of the movie, signaling revenge in the second movie because obviously her boyfriend, Hugo, is trying to get up to Zolom, but obviously he gets killed because obviously that that's always how great love stories end. Someone dies and then revenge. I felt like this movie would have played out a lot better if they ended it just when she made the reference of who Nova was and she found out where Nova was and she found out her whole quest and what everything she wanted to do rather than having this stare down and having like her boyfriend die I guess you could say because they were kind of together she wanted to give him her heart and all that kind of stuff so yeah it was a it was a pretty decent movie overall guys but like I said I don't normally do these kind of movie reviews but I will be doing these kind of movie reviews and many more of them in the future as I am trying to do more movie based content as there is a lot of cool movies coming out that we will be reviewing, like Detective Pikachu, obviously Captain Marvel and Avengers 4, but I want to be reviewing 
a lot of movies this year. So guys, let me know in the comment box down below any criticism about how I reviewed the movie. I mean, overall, I gave it a 7 out of 10. It wasn't bad, wasn't great. But yeah, guys, I enjoyed it. One of the biggest criticisms is there's a bunch of villains, yeah, but they're all like strange, weird looking. And then Alita's looking pretty nice. She looks like a human being, even though she isn't. So yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of articles about sexism, the feminism, but no, there's no feminism in this at all. I mean, I'm getting people like, I'm seeing stuff being sent, stuff like, oh my God, Elitus the hero. Captain Marvel isn't the hero. Captain Marvel movie isn't even out yet, guys. So chill out, really chill. I don't think this movie was sold on the, the sense of sexism i don't even understand why i'm talking about this but like i said i like to review all aspects of the movie yeah it is a bit strange how she does look really good and they've made like the villains the other cyborgs look like cyborgs and not humanized at all but overall the story was pretty cool um it's just imagine it's it's just how you would imagine i guess the anime the kind of manga comics come to life so i mean i think i'm in advantage because i don't know anything about this character outside the movie so i did overall enjoy it but please guys go and watch this movie don't compare it to anything else it's just annoying how in the 21st century everyone for some reason is comparing this to being a social justice warrior movie or stuff like that i mean it's captivating visually stunning the fights are crazy but the only criticism is elita looks a lot better than the, the other people she fights which is kind of strange how they've done that but i haven't really looked too much into this as i don't tend to review things like this but like i said guys i will be so like always guys please like subscribe and comment and i will catch you in another video very soon if you do have any movies or stuff like that that you want me to review just hit me up down below i will be doing a q a later on today so i will be answering some questions that i got about like avengers and some other things like that so it's gonna be pretty dope i think anyway guys i'll catch you in another video very soon catch ya later